بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد سيد الخلق أجمعين اللهم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم ربنا بارك لنا في القرآن وزدنا علما يا رب العالمين We reach the ayah inshallah number uh, 58 in Surah Yusuf inshallah So far 57 and before is we close the first chapter basically in the surah where Nabiullah Yusuf alayhi salam, like what we said last time, between the chapter he was born and he was thrown in the, in the well by his brothers, and he has seen that ru'ya, the, 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 the vision, having the 11 stars and the moon and the sun and the moon prostrating, making sujood for him. And then he was thrown in the jub, and then he was picked up, and then he went to Egypt, then he was seduced, then he, was, he went to jail. Finally, he was exonerated, and then... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala مَكَّنَّ لِيُوسَفَ فِي الْأَرْضِ Now, he was given exactly what he asked for. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the ultimate reward and he reached his maturity. Allah al at this age, he reached also the prophecy. He is at the prophecy age at 40 years old and he left jail in dignity and respect. Everybody, you know, respected him. And the king loved him so much, he gave him the highest place in his kingdom. He became... The, final, the minister of all the agricultural products in his, um, in his time, which is what we could say today, like the finance minister at the time, because the finance is not just about money at the time, it was about products and what you sell, what you buy. So that chapter is complete now. And what a journey for Sayyidina Yusuf from somebody who was abused and conspired on, been thrown in the jub, in the well, and now he is in the, one of the highest ranking uh, any person could possibly achieve not by bloodline. Otherwise, he would have been a king. You know, a king has to be inherited from somebody else. He is a minister, which is the highest place you could possibly reach, and he requested that. This is what he wanted. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted him exactly what he wanted. Now, now, the second chapter is that how did he meet his brothers and how the reunion between him and his father uh, Ya'qub alayhi salam, what has the story has to tra- transpired from there? And now, when he took over, when he became the finance minister, his prediction, or his not prediction, his vision, uh, the vision of the king that he interpreted as being the seven, uh, you know, good years will be followed by seven, uh, you know, very, uh, d- like a severe drought years afterwards, these 14 years. So these years started in his age, in his time. So he already started to prepare, he started to get ready for the first seven years, for him to get ready for the next seven years, and he was the best person it can be for him to deal with this crisis, on the, not only for the Egyptian ummah at the time, the, the Egyptians also, but all the surrounding area, including Palestine. Now, his brothers came in from Palestine seeking trade. And it's been said it was already started the age of the time where it's already drought time, and there's no food, there's no, nothing to eat, and it's already, the, the, all the nations around Egypt, Egypt itself, and the, all the surrounding nations, they're already suffering from this drought that is happening to them at this point. So his brothers came in to, to trade, basically. And we, what we say today is that, oh, look at the coincidence, or look at the turn of events, or look what, or somebody else would say, Wow, look what happened. You know, when we say, is the Muslims say, Subhanallah, it is a planned thing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He plans. And what we see things that to us it looks like a casual events or surprising, surprising events, it's not surprises. Everything goes by the plans of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's the planner. And everything he plans becomes true. Because it happens. Allah subhanahu, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what is his ultimate purpose. We can you know, contemplate and think about things, but the plan from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, only him knows what the consequences of it is, you know, at the end. The brothers of Yusuf, alayhi salam, came in, they entered the place he was in. He recognized them. Munkar, you know, when he says munkar, is that unknown. He knew exactly who they were, 
And of course, they look at him, there's no way for them to envision or imagine or possibly even think for one second, this is the small boy that they threw in the job back 30 years ago, and now he is the minister in Egypt. There's no way. It means that he rejects the knowledge. There's no way they, could, they did not recognize him, you know, the knowledge of him. Now, and he prepared them, right? And he's the minister at the time. He's the one who deals with, with you know, whatever people want to sell and buy. They got it through him, right? When he prepared them and he took their trade, most likely at the time it was some form of barter. It was not really a money exchanged at the time. They brought in some goodies, some goods from, uh, you know, uh, from Palestine. And of course, he would trade back with what? The thing they need most is most likely is going to be wheat because that's what people used to eat most of the, the, the time. So, not important what it was. It's, tr it's trade of some sort. And he gave them exactly what they wanted and prepared them and, you know, gave them everything on their camels, whatever it is that they carry their products in. And then he told them, and the ayah says, he asked them, he says, bring me your brother. Bring me your brother. Now, from this ayah, even though it's a question, we understand a few things. Number one is that there were 10. Number 11 was not there. Who is number 11? Binyamin. Actually, technically, from sequence is number 12. Because number 11 is Yusuf alayhi salam. So technically, from the sequence is number 12. So we understand that Binyamin, or Benjamin, was not with them. That's number one. Number two is that, how would he, would he automatically tell them, oh, you know, by the way, I know who you are, and I know your father, I know this, 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 whatever. He says, bring me your brother. You know, they're going to go, wait a minute, how did you know? Oh, you must be Yusuf. He didn't, he didn't know this. Obviously, what he did is that he sat there, he kind of conversed with them. Who are you? What did you come from? And this and that. And they told him, you know what? We are so-and-so. Our father, Yaqub, he lives in the city or whatever, whatever. He says, oh, we have another brother. He says, how many of you? He says, well, we were 12, but one of us died. The wolf ate him, right? They continued on with a lie, right? He's saying that that's number 11, but we still have another brother, which is he's always in the company of his father because his father's an old man. So supposedly the tafsir said, that's the logical, you know, conclusion of it. He says, you know what? Why don't you bring me that number 11 brother? I want to make sure you tell me the truth about yourselves as a proof to their story, you know? So he came out with excuse for him to see number 12 brother, which is, uh, you know, which is Benjamin, right? And then he told him, he said, Don't you see that I complete the kail? I'm an honest, I do good trade with you. I do the kail. Kail is mizan, is the weight. You know, like the days, and actually even my days, you know, we don't see it here in this country too much. But in a lot of different places, like you use the weight of size, like, you know, you want to do like, you know, say a kilogram of or pound of something, you don't necessarily use to weigh it at the time, you used to take a size of something, you used to scoop of this, you know, a weight of milk in that, a container of milk of that, or whatever it is. So that is the kail, when you say al-mikyal, al-mikyal. From this word mikyal, we have the name of the, the name of the angel from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is called Mika'il, Mika'il, لأنه يكيل, he's the one who weighs, or the, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the power for him to, you know, to drive the water and the rain different places, and he calculates exactly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders him, he says, on top of Los Angeles is going to be this much water, on top of this area is going to be so much rain, and if you notice that everything that we're all about comes in always from rain. All the wealth, all the money, everything happens is from rain. If there is an area that has rain in it, it becomes prosperous, becomes a good area. If an area that does not have any rain in it, obviously become desert-like and become completely empty. There's nobody will go there, nobody will visit it, nobody will be at that area. There is a, a place in the, in the Arabian Peninsula, it's called Arruba al Khali. There's somebody at the door, no? Or... Ah, mashallah. 
We we should have left the the lights on, but uh, the lights on out, outside. Assalamu alaikum. So, <clears throat> so the word here, wa ni awfi, wafa yuwafi. It means to complete. Assalamu alaikum. Wafa yuwafi is to complete. Wa Ibrahim alladhi wafa. He complete. He pays back. Min al tawfiya. We say somebody who, you know, somebody who completes it, he does not cut it short. And he's saying to them, he says, don't you see that I make the mikyal, I make the weight correctly, and I give everything that is due. I don't shortchange anybody, you know, of, of, of that meaning, right? I'm an honest person to trade with. I am the best munzil. Munzil. But the, the word is comes in from nazal. Nazal is to come down, right? Yanzilu min al-sama, right? Yanzilu min al-sama, ima'an. Nazal, nazal, it means to drop, to bring down, from top to bottom. When somebody goes from one place, and he is, uh, this person is going from one place to another, and he sits in a place, what does he do usually? He has to come down off of something. You'd be like riding a horse, riding a camel. Today, what do we do? Riding a car, riding an airplane, or something like that. So, the, we come down off of it, and the place that we stay in is called manzil. Manzil. And manzil means a house. Basically, manzil in the Arabic means a house, right? Munzil is somebody who brings somebody in the place of the house. The, the, he's the, the most hospitable, and a per meaning, is the one who provides a shelter and a place to stay. And he says, Look at me. He's describe himself. He says, bring your brother to me and I will complete your I am. I'll never shortchange you. I'm an honest trade. I'm do good trade with you. And I got good hospitality. Come, you know, you stay with me. You're going to be happy. So he is actually enticing them for them, make it more hospitable for them to come back, make the trip. Because if they go back to their father and they don't come back to him, you know, that's not what he wanted. So he wanted to make it as likable, as nice as possible, uh, you know, for them to come back eventually, right? And then now, he said that. At the same time, he turned around, he says, And if you don't bring him to me, huh? if you don't bring your brother to me, I would not give you kale. I would not be trading with you. So he gave him kind of like per se, it's like a stick and a carrot, kind of, you know, he's done with carrot first. He says, look at me, I, good, good, I do good trade with you. You stay with me and I'll give you a good place for you to stay. At the same time, if you don't, I'm not going to be trading with you. I'm not going to give you anything anymore. I'm not going to be, I would, you know, kind of in, in a way he says, I, I know that you're not worthy of my trade because you do not, you are not listening to what I'm asking you to do, right? وَلَا تَقْرَبُونَ يَقْرَبُ مِنَ الْقُرْبَى قُرْبَى قَرِيب It means close. Don't even come close to me. Do not even approach my country anymore. So at this point, he's basically put him to exile. He says, if you don't do this, you are banned from entering this place completely. Now they're stuck. They're stuck, basically. They say, well, there's something great is going to happen here if we come. And if we don't come, if we don't bring our brother, that's going to be a big problem for us because we're not going to be able to make trade anymore, you know? Now, so, قالوا, they said, سنراويد عنه أباه وإن لفعلون. He says, we will go and, uh, you know, entice or we're going to try to push his father to allow him to come with us. And we're going to do that. وإن لفعلون. And we're going to do it. You know, we're going to do it. Like, it's a promise. is that we're doing it. We will do it. Don't worry, we'll do it. You know? So obviously from this ayah, they were completely convinced of the benefit to listen to the finance minister, Yusuf alayhi salam, from their hearts. They say, oh yeah, yeah, we're going to go there, we're going to push him, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, we're going to bring him in. We'll do it, don't worry, we'll do it, we'll get it done. But now there's one more obstacle in the way. How about if they go back to their country, they come from, and they have no products for them to trade, you know? 
Who knows? Might take them months, might take them a year for them to collect more products, you know, for them to come back and trade. So to make sure this is not going to happen, he did an extra bonus with them. So what he did? وَقَالَ لِفِتْنِيَانِهِ جَعَلُوا بِضَاعَتَهُمْ فِي رِحَالِهِمْ He said to Fitnian, to his boys, to, the, to his helpers, he says, take their products, which is supposedly they traded us with, with whatever, take these products and put it back with their stuff so they will take it back. So once they arrived to their home country with their father, they unpacked, they found all the, the wheat, whatever they got, plus the old product back again, the one, the, the one they got, and now they have no reason for them not to come back and trade one more time. Because now they're trading twice on the same products, right? So look at the planning of Yusuf alayhi salam. A plan, a plan. There's something big is going to happen. Something huge is going to happen. And Yusuf alayhi salam is working so hard for him to get it done. He's taken all the earthly ways to get it done and eventually Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will get his ways done regardless but he's taken you know all the steps to make it happen right so وَقَالَ لِفِتِيَانِهُ جَعَلُوا بِضَاعَتَهُمْ فِي رِحَالِهِمْ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَعْرِفُونَهَا maybe they recognize the fact that we can come back again and make more trade you know take our products and put it back إِذَا قَلَبُوا إِلَىٰ أَهْلِهِمْ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْجِعُونَ they will recognize it that this good trade and that would entice them, that would push them for them to come back again very soon to make more trade. A very well good plan, you know, for Yusuf alayhi salam, for him to bring who? Yaqub, his father, and all Bani Israel, all the Israelites, to bring him from Palestine, to bring him to Egypt. This is the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <clears throat> so, the plan so far, it's working. Walhamdulillah rabbil alameen. فَلَمَّا رَجَعُوا إِلَىٰ إِبِيهِمْ When they went back, رَجَعَ يَرْجِعَ رَجَعَ They go back, no? To their father. قَالُوا They said, now this is the argument now. This, they started to convince their father. يَا أَبَانَا مُنِعَ عَنَّا الْكَيْلِ يَا أَبَانَا Oh, our father. The kail, the trade, has been prevented from us. Do you see? فَأَرْسِلْ مَعَنَا أَخَانَا But send our brother with us. Because that was the condition of that, the, the, the finance minister. So we can trade, we can make money, you know, we can just go back and forth and make money. Otherwise, if we don't have our brother with us, there's no way for us to make trade anymore. Right? And we are, for our brother, what is the word? Hafizun. And the word we, we know really well, we use it all the time, the word hafiz. We, like we described before, if somebody is, who memorizes the Qur'an, what do we call him? Ha, protector. Hafiz. Hafiz Qur'an. And some people mistakenly, they think hafiz as a memorizer. Hafiz is a lot more than that. It's not you, just, you don't just memorize the Qur'an. You also keep it. You protect it. You give it all what it needs for it to be in a safe and good place. That's the hafiz. Wallahu khayrun hafiza. Who is the really protector? Who is the really the, does the, the hafiz? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the khayrun hafiza. The best. The best one. If somebody will be in under the hafiz, under the protection, under the hafiz of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's safe. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the protector. So, they said to him, what did they say? وَإِنَّا لَهُ To our brother, لَحَافِظُونَ We will protect him. And subhanAllah, we read this somewhere else before, didn't we? Didn't they say this about Yusuf when we said, they said to their father, when they went outside to the desert, they said, يَا أَبَانَا أَرْسِلْهُ مَعَنَا غَدًا يَرْتَعُ وَيَلْعَبُ وَإِنَّا لَهُ لَحَافِظُونَ And we will protect him. Right? The same word got repeated twice. The first time, well, guess what they did? They were actually conspiring and they wanted to kill him. But with the rahmah and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they did not kill him. And they said, you know, that's the most merciful of all of them. The, the, the older one, Yehuda, what did he say? He says, don't kill him. Don't kill this boy. Just throw him in the well. Okay, that's, you know, that's better. So at least 
we don't, you know, hold a knife and, you know, we actually kill him. What they did is they took Yusuf, alayhi salam, and they threw him in the well. Subhanallah. That was their way of hafaf, right? Subhanallah. That was a good way to hafaf. Subhanallah. So, qala, their father listened to the same words. As we say today in our language, we say deja vu. I mean, I've been through this before. I've, I've been through these situations before. The same ten brothers, they took the brother Yusuf, and you promised me, you said you're going to keep him. And you came back without him, crying to me. You said that the wolf ate him. And you bring me his shirt with the blood on it. And now he says, you know, you're doing it again? You're saying the same thing again? Qala, hal amanukum alayhi? Would I trust you again on, on him? Illa kama amantukum ala Yusuf? It's exactly the same. I trusted you on Yusuf, what you did with Yusuf. And this is what we say, the word he used, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used, amanakum, min amana, amana. Amana, is the, the, the word is that, min al-amin, amin, or amin. Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasalam, his name after 40 years of living amongst these people, you know, in Quraysh, his description was, al-sadiq al-amin, al-amin. That if you give him a hundred dollars, you give him a hundred pieces of gold, if you give him a million pieces of gold, he will never violate his oath. He never steal. He never cheat. That is the Amin. You could always turn your back on him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described the believers. هُمْ فِي سُورَةِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِأَمَانَاتِهِمْ وَعَهْدِهِمْ رَاعُونَ لِلْأَمَانَةِ الْأَمَانَةِ رَاعُونَ They pay attention to the amana. When I say Amin, Amen. I give somebody, you know, say, would I amen you on this one? I say, I, would I trust you on this? You know, if I give it to you, I know as a fact that you're not going to take any sip out of it. I know this bottle of my you're not going to touch it. And I know you're going to protect it. And I know if I come back 100 years from now, you're still going to be protecting it. Why? Because it is, because it is amana. If somebody amen as somebody else, it means to trust, to trust them fully on it. He's asking them, he says, would I trust you on Benjamin, Benjamin? Like I've trusted you on Yusuf before? He says, the same thing. You, you, you're asking me the same thing before. فَاللَّهُ خَيْرٌ حَافِظًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the hafiz. Not you. You're not going to be doing the hafiz. You're not going to be doing the protection. You're not the ones. I've experienced this with you before. I know what you've done before. And they know even better than him. They're the ones who conspired over the years. And probably been like, you would say like 20 or 30 years between the time they threw him in the well to the time that he is a minister of finance and he went through all these experiences in his life. And, Allah, and he says, Wallahu khayrun hafidha wa huwa him. Arhamur rahimin. He is the most merciful. He is the best, the most merciful of all merciful Creatures out there. Hmm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a statement here. Truthfully, if I want to trust my brother or I trust somebody, it doesn't matter who that person is. If I trust them and I say, you know what, I want to hand you something. And I want you to protect it for me. Truthfully, who, who's the protector? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the protector. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala utilizes people to do stuff for his sake. You know, and sometimes not very good people, sometimes good people, sometimes pious people, sometimes not very pious people. You know, like look at yourself today. You take your money and you put it in a safe deposit box. In the worst people ever, they're the ones who steal everybody else's money in the banks, right? And they are, they actually, technically, they're the best to protect your money if you put it in a safe deposit box because nobody could rob it, nobody could do this. But who truthfully, truly does the hafad and the protection? is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The same thing, if you take the same measurement, let's say this. If you're sick, who really gives the health? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the way that He utilizes this method, is that, he, and this is the wasiyah from Rasulullah <coughs> you go to the doctor, and the doctor will give you medication, you take this medication, but then you have to know that Allah, and only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who gives the health. Right? So it's a method. The same thing. If you have a piece of land 
and you can plant on it all the seeds you want, right? And you say, you know what, I did what I want, and that's it. Next year, I'm going to come back. I'm going to have, you know, trees and products. No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who grows everything. You have to know, it's not the land, it's not the seed, it's not the water, it's not the sun, or not the combination of all the above. What really makes it happen is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You always got to go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the statement here, what, you, what Yaqub alayhi salam is saying. He's saying is that he is the khayrun hafidha. He's the one who protects. Not you, not, uh, not the ten brothers, which is, I've seen what you guys did anyway. And he is the most merciful of all the mercifuls, right? وَلَمَّا فَتَحُوا مَتَعَ Now, at this point, so obviously from this, the, the, the way how the ayat is told, so far they arrived and immediately went to talk to their father without unpacking their stuff. Why? It says, وَلَمَّا فَتَحُوا When they opened up their, you know, their, whatever it is they're carrying from their, their package and their luggage and everything else, their, their packs on top of their animals. وَلَمَّا فَتَحُوا مَتَاعَهُمْ وَجَدُوا بِضَاعَتَهُمْ رُدَّتْ إِلَيْهِمْ They found their product been returned back to them. So that tells you how they were so anxious, as they promised Yusuf earlier, so anxious to go back to their father and tell him, please, please, let us go back. Let us have our brother and take him back with us because we're going to trade, we're going to do this, this, this. They actually did this before they unpacked. So it must have been like dusty and dirty. They sat down and said, oh, please, father, allow Benjamin to come with us next time. You know? And then, when they opened up their, you know, their, their products and everything else, they found everything they wanted to trade with, been returned back to them again one more time. Hmm? And now they have more excuse. They went back again. They said, Oh, our father, we are not transgressors. We're not committing any injustice. Here's our product went, went back to us. You know, it's not us been returned back to us. It's, you know, been returned back to us. It's not like we stole it. It's not like, you know, we took it. Look at our product. It's been packed. It's been put back into, you know, in our camels and our rides again one more time. Ruddat ilayna. Wa namiru ahluna. And then they went back again. Almir is that the, the, um, the supplies and to give the food. And that's called mir. Wa namiru ahluna. When Umir Ahlna is that for us to give our family, our tribe, the food and the products and everything else. Now they're, they're saying about, you know, making more argument for them to go back again to see Yusuf alayhi salam. وَنَحْفَظُ أَخَانَا See, and now we're going to protect our brother, which is Benjamin. وَنَزْدَادُ كَيْلَ بَعِيرٌ And then we're going to get a little bit bonus. وَنَزْدَادُ We're going to have one extra load of one more camel. وَذَلِكَ كَيْلٌ يَسِيرٌ That's a little bit of extra kail, a little bit of extra weight that we can carry, right? So they may try to make more convincing argument with their father, Yaqub alayhi salam, to send, you know, Benjamin with them back to Yusuf alayhi salam. قَالَ now, you, Yaqub alayhi salam went back to them. قَالَ لَنْ أُرْسِلَهُمْ عَكُمْ I'm not going to send, them, send him with you. حَتَّى تُؤْتُونِي مَوْثِقًا مِّنَ اللَّهِ لَتَأْتِيَنِّي بِهِ I'm not going to send him with you unless you bring me. A, mawthiq. Wathiq is, mawthiq is a tie, a promise. Not only from this, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For you to bring him, for you to bring him back to me, illa yuhata bikum, except for for you to, for something you know like severe to come upon you that you're not you're not able to bring him back. Let's say he dies or, or you die or something really big like that. What is mawthiqa min Allah? Mawthiqa min Allah. I could tell you, you know, I could tell you today. I say, make a promise. I say, oh, I promise. I say, oh, that's not good enough. You say, uh, you promise something big. You know what I'm saying? I promise something big. I promise with this, 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 that, whatever. I swear by this, that, whatever. I say, that's not good enough. What do you say? I swear by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah, the creator of all. I swear by Him. I will promise, I will do this, 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 this. And that will be good enough. Why? Because now you're swearing. You're making Musa. You're making a promise. You're not swearing by... Your mother's grave, or your, your father's eyes, you're not swearing by the gold in your pockets, you're swearing by something really big, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
He's telling them, you promise, you get me a trustworthy something from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you bring him back to me. Hmm. Except for you and you bikum, is that for you to be surrounded and you're not able to comply with this promise, right? And then he said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is from what we are saying right now. He is the wakil. He is the attorney. He is the sustainer. Now they made an oath. He made, they made an oath to him by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Say, by the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we'll bring him back to you. You know, we'll do our best no matter what the situation is. We'll bring him back to you. And once he, they made that exchange, he says, Allah ala Allahu ala ma naqulu. Wakil, he's our wakil. Wakil, as a word, we could say he's the, our attorney, he's our uh, uh, witness. witness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a witness. Wakil, I would say shaheed. Witness is closer to be shaheed, is a witness. Wakil is the substitute or the one who takes our place in this deal. Right? What we say is that. He's my wakil. Like for instance, I, I, like I assign you to be my wakil. What do you power do? Of attorney. The power of attorney. You have the power to speak on my behalf. You're the one who sustain my interest. You're the one who keep my, uh, what's good for me. You're the one who know. And this is wakil. And from this word say, tawakkul. Tawakkul. Tawakkalu ala Allah. You know, do tawakkul. We surrender to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he's our wakil, he's our attorney, he's our provider, he's the defender. He's the one who looks after our interests. See? He's the wakil, right? وَقَالَ يَا بُنَيَّ لَا تَدْخُلُوا And then he told them something which is very controversial in the, uh, the, in the tafsir. Until today, you go through the tafsir, you really don't find a good explanation for this ayah. قَالَ يَا بُنَيَّ لَا تَدْخُلُوا مِنْ بَابٍ وَاحِدٍ He told them, yeah, all my children, do not enter the city from one door. Do not enter the city from the لَا تَدْخُلُوا مِنْ بَابٍ وَاحِدٍ باب, right? وَدْخُلُوا مِنْ أَبْوَابٍ مُتَفَرِّقًا Enter from different doors. وَمَا أُغْنِي عَنْكُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ شَيْءٍ And I'm not trying to do something for you that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cannot do for you. مَا أُغْنِي عَنْكُمْ مِنَ الْغِنَى I'm not trying to protect you or to do something for you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to do for you. مِنْ شَيْءِنِ الْحُكْمُ الْحُكْمُ The rule belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِنِ الْحُكْمُ إِلَّا لِلَّهِ تَوَكَّلْتُ عَلَيْهِ تَوَكَّلْتُ I mean tawakkul on him. I surrender to him. He's my attorney. He's my provider. وَعَلَيْهِ فَلْيَتَوَكَّلِ الْمُتَوَكِّلُونَ And on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, should anybody make tawakkul? Should anybody should surrender to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he's the attorney, he's the provider, he's the protector, he's the one who stands there for you? Do he says something but has no logical explanation to it. He says, حَاجَةٌ فِي نَفْسِ Just, you know, something in my heart, you know, you know, just do it. Just to get it done. Like I go tell the brother, I say, you know what? Don't take Sierra Highway, take the 14. I say, why? You know, the, the GPS says, you know, Sierra Highway is open. You say, no, no, no. It's something in my heart, you know, to, to go that way instead of that way. Why? He's not giving me why, but he's saying something in my heart. Just do it. And it's not a coincidence. First of all, we have to understand something. Nothing in the Quran is a coincidence. Nothing in the Quran may be this way, maybe that. Everything in the Quran has a meaning, has a specific purpose, and a very important purpose. That's number one. Number two is, if something has no importance, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wouldn't have mentioned it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions specific things because we should learn from it. We should learn from it. The thing is not important, it's not mentioned. Like for instance, do we know how many camels and horses or donkeys or mules they used? No, well, we don't. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not tell us. Why? Not important. It's not going to help us any. Actually, the opposite. If we, if we pay attention to, to a small, minute detail like this, it would distract our attention from the importance of the moral of the story, right? Now, do we know, was it in the summertime, wintertime? We don't know. Do we know what road they took? Was it through Sinai or whether it's through here, there, or whatever? We don't know. How many days it took them? We don't know. How many helpers they had with them? We don't know. Not important. But now we know from the story is, 
Yaqub, their father, said, do not, on, do not enter from one door. Enter from several doors, from separate doors, each one of you from separate doors. And he said, I'm not, I'm not protecting you. I'm not doing anything for you, except, and they did what, they, what their father told them, except they did it because there's something in the heart, something Yaqub wanted, and it's been done. The Mufassirin said, is that, oh, because of the Al-Ain, which is the evil spirit, or the, uh, the eye, you know, the evil eye. They said, because of the evil eye. Why? They said, okay, fine. If, uh, when uh, the brothers of Yaqub, the 10 of them, or the 11 of them now, they enter through one door, and they find out have a nice big caravan, they're all healthy and strong, and, and uh, 11. 11 of them, you know, good looking, strong, you know, healthy, 11, and they say these 11 children. Back in the days, if you have one child, son, child, that would be, wow, that is the biggest thing ever. You know, you, if you have 10, 11, this guy, this guy is so blessed, you know. Now, if you have, and back in the days, if you have female, if you have a daughter, oh, no, 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 that we don't pay attention to, we don't, you know, that's going to bring us shame, you know. So children having men, grown men at this age, each one of them, you know, as tall, as handsome, as good looking as, and 11 of them, that something is going to bring in the evil eye to them. And he wanted to have, and the concept here is that he wanted to, to, for them to have protection from it. Now, let's talk a little bit about the evil eye. Is the evil eye or the, the ayn, what we say in the Arabic, we say ayn. Is it a fact? Does it have power? The evil eye, does it have power on people? Yes. Rasulullah told us, if there's something has an effect on somebody, would be the evil eye. The evil eye or line min al. And originally from what? The word is from the hasad. The hasad, which is the envy. The hasad. When you do hasad to somebody, when you are envious to somebody, you cause in the somebody some kind of harm. Some kind of harm. Now, we really don't know, with our limited capacity of knowing things, we really don't know what is that nature of this harm. Some people tried to explain it. They said, oh, you know what, there's a, a blue ray that, that penetrates, and, you know, when somebody uh, has, you know, does certain things, the blue ray will protect them, and this and that. We have no solid proof of this. What this only proof that we follow is what Rasulullah, our Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa told us. That's what we follow. Now, the nature of this harm, we don't know what it is, but we know as a fact that it is there. There is definitely some form of effect, negative effect, somebody will cast upon somebody else by if when he does hasad to him, when he envy him, when you look at him and you admire something that somebody has, an admiration in, in a bad way, you know? Huh? Admire. Admire. Yeah. Mm. When you admire it, right? When you, mm -hmm. you cause this somebody some kind of harm. Or you expose them to some kind of harm. Now, we admit that is there because Rasulullah told us that is, it is there. And how, first of all, how do we protect ourselves from it? Um, we, we mentioned the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but more importantly is that, and our formula is the two mu'awwadhat. At the end of the Qur'an, قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقْ مِنْ شَرِّ مَا خَلَقْ وَمِنْ شَرِّ خَلَقْ The two last ayah in the Qur'an, we should say them. We should always say them. قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقْ قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ And especially brothers, if you have a newborn, if you have a newborn, you know, don't, buy him the, the surah and, and stick it on his clothes and, and do not write it on a piece of paper, fold it and stick it in there. That's not the way. That's not the way that you protect this child. The, only, the best way you can protect him by you reciting the two mu'awadat on him. The last two surah in the Quran with قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَد The one before that. قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَد And the two mu'awadat. Sahabi Rasulullah companion, he says, we need, he says, we, mankind, need the mu'awwadat, these two ayat, these two surah, more than what we need food, more than food. 
will give you protection, will give you help, will give you assistance more than food. How neglectful are we of these ayat? Surah. And it's been, there's many stories on this one here, even the days of Rasulullah that somebody casted a spell on Rasulullah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the two surah. And this, some people said a hadith da'ifa, it's really not true, the stories never happened. But ultimately that we know it's our prescription to be protected from the evil eye or anything else for that matter is to recite these two surah continuously. Before we go to bed, Rasulullah told us, if you recite them before you go to bed, with قُلُّهُ اللَّهُ أَحَدُ You'll be protected from them from the shaitan. With, of course, the rest of the dhikr, you know. We say ayatul al-kursi with the rest of the, the, the dhikr, whatever it is. There is a specific keys that we have for doors to open up for us. Like, for instance, do you want to be, do you want to be protected from the torture and the torment of the grave? What do you do? You recite Surah Al-Mulk before you go to bed. And that is the best protection. Do you want to be protected from the fitna and the trial and the severe trial of Al-Masih al-Dajjal, the, which is some people who call him the Antichrist or whatever that is, you know, the name of that somebody who's going to claim deity. He's going to be like, almost has the powers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala walking the face of this earth. And this is the biggest fitna ever, the biggest trial ever for any man ever to walk the face of this earth, that every single prophet has warned his people on it. How do you protect yourself from it? By reciting the beginning and the end of Surah Al-Kahf. You recite the beginning and the end. In the Quran, you got all the protection you need. You got all the help you need. Everything you need, it has clearance, it has clarifications, it has help. Do you want to protect your home from the shaitan entering your home? The shaitan will go on any home. You know? But any home that is Surah Al-Baqarah recited in it, he hates it. He's like, to him, he cannot enter it. There's something that would keep him away from it. Do you want to make shaitan does not enter your home? And this is the thing that I always remind myself and remind the brothers. If you have a problem with your wife, if you have a problem with your children, if your child is not listening to you, if you tell him, son, go make your salah, and he's so busy in his Xbox, he's so busy in his TV, he's so busy in his different, doing different thing. If you talk to your wife, you tell her one thing, she says, no, no, I, she does not listen to you. Why? Subhanallah, when you were first married, the first five days, it was all love and all, you know, I love you forever. And what happened? What happened now is you tell her, you know what? Can you make rice and, and bean for me? She will make you what? Macaroni and salad, just in spite, just, just to bother you. What happened? You know, why are you doing this for? You know why? The shaitan got in the house. The shaitan is, you go with your wife sitting alone. You're not alone. The shaitan is the third one of you. And shaitan trying to push you away from each other so hard. How do you get rid of him? Try to take a stick and hit him on the head. Not gonna happen. Try to take a shotgun and shoot him. Not gonna happen. Try to tell him, get away from me, you so and so. You curse on him all day. It's not gonna happen. It's the opposite. He's gonna be so happy. He's say, ah, I really, really, really bugged him. And he's gonna get so big and so huge. Like Rasulullah told us, he will be as big as a house. You know, big and huge. You know, he's so happy with himself because he agitated you. The way you protect yourself is by A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem, number one. Number two is Surah Al-Baqarah in the house. No protection, yeah, better than that. No protection. And then, and so on and so on. And every single surah in the Quran has a key for protection, has a key for something. Al-Ain Haq, as Rasulullah said it, it's Haq, it will happen. The way we protect ourselves, no. but now we have to realize something. It does not happen unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills it to happen. But again, does anything happen without the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Nothing. So, we never think that the eye or the evil eye will supersede the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We never think this way. That would be shirk. Always we have to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who allows it to happen or prevent it from happening. But if somebody cast it on you, you could conceivably be in some kind of hurt, some kind of damage. And the way you protect yourself is by summoning or remembering the ways of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by summoning the protection of the Quran and say, Ya Allah, protect me, Ya Allah, protect me, Ya Allah. Qul a'udhu bi rabbil falaq min shari ma khalaq, qul a'udhu bi rabbil nas, malikin nas, ilahin nas. Maybe one of these days, maybe when we finish this, we should go on a 
جزء, the, the, the last جزء to explain all these different beautiful ayat is the most important surah in the Quran to explain the meanings of it. And unfortunately, us Muslims, especially the young ones, we memorize all these surah in the Quran, but we really don't know the exact meanings of it. You know, what does it mean? What does it mean? Inna shani'aka huwa al-abtar. This is the most famous surah in the whole Quran. Why? The shortest. We always know it. That one is the shortest, the quickest. <laughs> Subhanallah, right? Wal-asr. Inna al-insan. We know it, right? But do you really know what it means? Are you just saying it? You know, even the Arabic-speaking people are the most susceptible of not knowing what's in it. Why? They get all cocky. Oh yeah, of course I speak Arabic. Do you really know what shani'at means? You know what abtar means? And I challenge you, if somebody did not learn it, who would not know what it is. We need to go through them, inshallah, one by one. That's number one. Number two is that, now here's going back to the surah. Did Yaqub, where did the, the, the interpreters of the Quran, the fasir of the Quran, come out with this from? Sure, uh, sure. No. sure, sure. So what about black magic? Can somebody actually, uh, you know, cast something on you? Uh-huh. Can they actually cast a spell on you? No. And that is a completely a myth about black magic, sorcery, none of this. And even one more thing, which is the power of shaitan. The shaitan has no power over you. The shaitan has no power over you. Shaitan, all the shaitan could do is one thing. One thing only. Shaitan does waswasa. You waswas. That's all he does. وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ وَنَعْلَمُ مَا تُوَسْوِسُ بِهِ نَفْسُهُ Shaitan does waswasa. That's what he does. What does waswasa mean? Uh, people say whisper. That's not a very accurate description. Whisper means, because, whisper what? If I walk over to the brother and I say something through his ear, goes through his ear, through, you know, the nerve, goes in there, goes in his brain, and then he processes this words through the whisper. That's not waswasa. Waswasa means to give you the idea, to make you think it is your own without you knowing where it comes from. That's waswas. Shaitan does not speak because whisper, it means somebody got to speak. Well, so shaitan is not speaking. Shaitan cannot talk to you because in a realm... In the universe that he has, although it's parallel to ours, that he sees us, we don't see him. And he eats from the, the different products that we have in the face of this earth. He sleeps in the caves. We know, you know about the shaitan and the jinn in general. But his realm of communication is not like ours. We are heavy. He's light. He travels. The, the, he goes back and forth. He goes to higher heaven, lower heaven. We can't. We are controlled by gravity. We need to, uh, the, the air to breathe. We have bodies. We've got to have to have food. He's different. He's a different creature. He does not talk to us. Except in a few occasions where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed him to penetrate his world into ours. And few times where we human, mankind, was able to penetrate the world and communicate with him. It's like the days of Sulaiman alayhi salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the powers so he can control the jinn. And this is known in the Quran. It's a fact. Rasulullah alayhi salatu salam communicated with the jinn. But that was on a couple of occasions. And this is the surah in the Quran. Surah al-Jinn. Specifically talking about it. قُلْ أُوحِيَ إِلَيَّ أَنَّهُ اسْتَمَعَ نَفَرٌ مِّنَ الْجِنِّ فَقَالُوا إِنَّا سَمِعْنَا قُرْآنًا عَجَبًا رسول الله عليه وسلم came in and he um, inshallah we're gonna have salah inshallah at 8.30 salah at Aisha inshallah um, um, so we only have few more minutes inshallah so we'll continue رسول الله عليه الصلاة والسلام spoke to the jinn and they understood the message they understood the Quran they carried the message of Quran they went it, they took it back to his to their people Right, right, but I cannot talk to the jinn without the, without Allah Subhanahu wa Taala giving me permission. Uh, the jinn cannot talk to me without Allah Subhanahu wa Taala giving him permission to penetrate the norm, the rules Allah Subhanahu wa Taala set. So the way we protect ourselves from the shaitan is by a'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim, and to be protected from the waswasa. The waswasa is that the shaitan, like I said, what he does is that he implants the idea in your head, but you don't know where it comes from. You don't know where it comes from. You think it's your own. And you know, sometimes I, I have an idea. 
You know, you know how it is. If you if you're watching like a cartoon, you like a light bulb blew up. You know, it's like okay, you know, I just have an idea that could conceivably be from the shaitan, right? Planted an idea on your head, and not only once, he does it repeatedly. He does it again and again and again and again and again. That's with the word we say was was. In the Arabic, if you have two syllables in one word being repeated in the same word, it means, it gives the, the connotation or the understanding of continuity. Like, was, was. You say, was, was. It means he's doing, the, he's doing it continuously. It doesn't stop. Like we say, the word silsila. Silsila is a chain. You see the chain. It goes one, one, one chain. Sil, sil. Right? Sal sabila aynan fiha. Surat al-insan. Aynan fiha, a water source or a spring water called sal sabila. It just continuously running and running and running. does not stop. Sal sabila. And so forth. You look at these words in the Arabic, you find them, it is actually there in the, in the Arabic language in that connotation. Now, going back to black magic. What is black magic? What gives the sorcerer powers for him to predict the future? What gives the black, the, 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 the magician or the, the sorcerer or the magician or whatever it is to give you power to harm you? What gives him that? No such a thing. No such a thing. People always claim, they say the jinn did this and jinn did that and this whatever. And we practice something called exorcism because the shaitan came inside somebody. This is all non-existent in the, in the Islam. We don't have any evidence of it. it. The only time this could possibly happen, I'm not saying that it cannot happen. It can happen with the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If it does happen, if it does happen, will be only because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala permitted it to happen. And these rules, these realms has been broken through from side to side. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alam. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put us here on the face of this earth with powers. We have powers, right? The biggest power is knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second power, knowing his Quran. Third one is to know the keys to protect ourselves. The fourth one is to, to, to follow the straight path. Like, you know, for instance, you tell somebody, can we all get sick? Of course. But if you follow a specific path, in life, you know, you protect yourself from, from a lot of different diseases, right? But does not mean somebody who protects himself is not going to ever get sick. Of course he gets sick. With the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you always got to be following the path for you to protect yourselves from this, you know, from this actions or that, uh, from the different actions there, here and there with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alam. That's, I think that's suffice. Uh, go ahead. By this is, uh, is the doubt. Mm. Put the doubt in anything. Either this is good for you or bad for you. Uh -huh. And then started thinking. Right. And you go in doubt. This is one of the this is one of the ways of the shaitan. One of the ways of the shaitan is that he does waswas. He gives you the idea of something so solid in your in your heart. Like you know, for instance, I talk to the brother Muslim. You know what he says to me? He says, "Who do you really trust?" He say, "I trust in Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala." He comes up to you and says, "How about if really there's no Allah? How about if there is no Prophet?" How about if the whole thing is a scam? How about, you know, he just plants a little bit of doubt in your mind. But this doubt is an idea. It's a thought. It's a thought, you know? So the shaitan, and this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us the shaitan. Shaitan will come in from above us. Uh, no, he did not say from above us. From the right, from our right, from our left. Not from above. From inside. From, uh, from underneath, from in the front, from the back, from the right, from the left. From all, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he did not say from the top. And people always contemplate, why not the top? You say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is on the top. It's got to be shaitan coming in on top of us from the top side. So, the shaitan will do anything and everything he can to get you off the path. In any which way. Sometimes, by doing what? By doing what? Like watch. He makes the Muslim, makes him so pious. He thinks that he's so pious, will actually increase his deen. By doing what? What do you do? You say, you know what? Salat al dhuhr is four rak'ah. You know what? Let me make it eight. It's better. More is better, right? Yeah. Let me make more. You know what? Better than eight? Let me make it twelve. And instead of making one sujood, I'll make two sujood. Or the one ruku, I'll make it two ruku, I'll make it four sujood. Get up and down, get up and down, get up and down. What did he do with this? And then, or you come out the other side, somebody else. You walk up to somebody and say, the salah is what you do. 
you get up, you stand up, you sit, then you stop. You don't need that. If you have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your heart, you don't need to make salah anymore. Just sit there and contemplate about Allah and His creation. That will make you a good Muslim. And some Muslims did that. And some Muslims actually did that. They stayed away from salah, they stayed away from siyam, they stayed away from things. Because why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lives in my heart, He lives in my mind. I don't need to remember Him every five. You're, you're the silly ones. You only remember Him five times a day by making salah. I remember every second of my life. You know what? This is a way of shaitan. Shaitan got in on him and made him think of something else. Yes, we are 24 hours in prayer. <laughs> 24. <laughs> exactly. One of them was saying something, and you go look at him, it's like, what does that mean? He says, he says if, you all, if you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, he said, that's the form of dua to him. Say, if, if people know you, they will never worship you. What does that mean? He took it a stack. Oh, you don't understand what I'm saying because I'm above you. You're silly. You don't know. You know what it means? It means because if they only know how merciful you are, how great you are, how forgiving you are, they will never worship you. Yeah, this is not something Rasulullah has said. This is not something he practiced. We fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All these words from coming from where? The shaitan goes in your, in your mind and screws with it and changes things. Exaggerate from the ghulu or make it less than what it is. But to get you off the path in any which way he can. Putting doubt in your mind. Putting uh, too much assertion in the other side. You know what the most powerful tools of the shaitan is? Too much confidence. You, you have too much confidence in things. Like what? I have confidence, I can make salat al dhuhr Oh, you could wait another minute, another minute, another minute, another Guess what? The time is gone, and you don't, you're not, you don't realize it. You say, I'm sure I can make it. You didn't make it. You're not going to make it. You're confident with your own deen. You think, oh, I'm, I'm always be Muslim. How can I be not Muslim? Is that possible? No way. I'm so confident I'm going to be Muslim. And guess what? Somebody, when become kafir, and he does not realize it. Being overly confident is one of the ways. Doubt is the other ways. And many, many ways that the shaitan will implant in your heart, in your mind, for him to get you off the path. So, inshallah. Um, My one point is that. Sure, sure, inshallah. Uh, we say this brother say, a farm to stay from the evil eye. You say, mashallah. Mashallah. Now. I read that the mashallah is for your own thing. Uh -huh. You see your class or your child, you say, mashallah. But for the other, that is Allah Barakallahu Alayhi. Barakallahu Alayhi. Naam, naam. That is the proper word right. for the Iwala. Right. Not the Mashaq. Right. That, that, that is, okay. This is what the brother is saying that there is a specific dua, there's specific something you say at the right time. You know? For instance, when you stay at duress, what do you say? Hasbunallah wa al wakil. When you are in a state of, and there's a treasure. And this is only the Ummah of Islam. I have been informed about it. It is لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله. That was not revealed to any nation before us. Only the Muslims use it. Rasulullah described it. He says it's a treasure underneath the Arsh al-Rahman. Only Rasulullah have known it. لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله. There is no power, there is no energy, there is no ways of anybody to do except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's hawqala. We should not translate it. We should exactly memorize it how it is. And we should say it exactly how it is, how it is been recited by Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam. Now, when you, uh, when you, um, okay, for every occasion, there is a right thing to say. When you start things, like you know, for instance, when you start things, how do you start with what? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, right? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, and you know, open up the door, you open up the book, you, you go to bed. But there's another one too. When you make a slaughter, you make the bih, how do you start it? What do you say? Allahu Akbar, right? When you go to war, you don't say by the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you say Allahu Akbar, right? Allahu Akbar at the beginning. If you want to start a speech, you want to start something, what do you start with? Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Right? This is the three things. And you don't start a speech by saying, Hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakil, and you start it. This is, this is not appropriate for this specific, although that is mentioned of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but it's not the correct meaning at the right place at the right time. So, going through the list of doing things, when somebody 
when you like have a newborn baby or new kids, you know, you show it to somebody, somebody visiting you, and you want to protect him from the evil eye. What do you say? Do you say, MashaAllah, 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 MashaAllah? Or do you say, what is, what is it the best thing to say? What is it? Allahu Akbar, Barak Allah. Barak You mentioned the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. More importantly is that you say, Qul a'udhu bi rabbil falaq. A'udhu bi rabbil falaq. Min shari ma khalaq. Min shari ghaizqil idha waqab. You seek protection. You say, Ya Allah. A'udhu. I seek protection. Right? A'udhu. It means I seek protection. Aqul, and you say, the, the, the ayah starts with qul, say. If you take out the say, and you say it, you say, A'udhu bi rabbil falaq min shari ma khalaq min shari ghaizqil idha waqab. What you did? You just summoned the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect you. From what is going to happen to you? Can you say it inside, or you can say it in your you could heart. Say, oh, you could say it in your heart. You can say it out loud. You say it out loud in front of people. Sure, some people, if they want to take it which way, I'm reciting Quran. It's not, a, not, a, not a, it should not be offended. It should not be, you know, doing. And, and the opposite, when you look at something, like you know, the brother comes up and says, "Come with me to the parking lot. Let me show you my brand new car." What do you do with him? You say, you walk up, you look at him, and you say. You recite it on your behalf to protect your brother, just in case if you have that envious look in your, in you, you're looking at his card. So you recite it also. You just mentioned it. That was my next question. Uh -huh. Do you even know that you have your gift? Exactly. How do you know you don't? You, you can't, you can't. Exactly. And sometimes the shaitan does not. You do something bad. The shaitan covers it up for you. Say, so you didn't do anything bad. You're not doing anything. So summoning the protection. From Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is an obligation to every Muslim. Like what Ibn Abbas said, we need more than what we need food. We need more than what we need water, right? To ask for this kind of protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you say them uh, like one after the other, you say Surah Falaq, and then you say no. It's the, the, um, both, uh, you could one decide both one after the other. When you do it this way, you gather the whole uh, protection power summoned up in these two surah. You get the following the Quran by following the sequence by saying "Qul a'udhu bi farq and then "Awdhu bi Rabbil Nas," and you follow the Sunnah of Allah uh, Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam when he uses them both at the same time and preceded, of course, with "Qul Allahu Ahad," and that is the best thing you could use for you to seek all the protection, and inshallah you'll be protected from anything from your own evil self, from your own. We have a saying in the, <laughs> in the Arab world. Do you know what we say? You know the biggest one who envy, he, envy anything is his own owner. How often that a guy sees a car, he's like, oh, look at my car. He's talking to himself, you know. Alaykum <laughs> salam Look at my car, look how beautiful my car. He did hasad, he's doing envy to his own car. He's hitting his own car with his own evil eye. <laughs> exactly. So what do you say? You seek protection from yourself. Out from anybody else and summon the powers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always there for you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us He will be always there for us to protect us. Allah is our wakil. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not put us on the face of this earth to suffer. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not put us here to, to contemplate, to think what is the right thing, to be in suspicions. That's not the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put us here and gave us the keys, gave us the ways, showed us the ways. He sent us prophets after prophets, a believable, trustworthy prophets who roam the face of this earth to tell us what the path is, how the path. All what we have to do, just follow the path. Follow what we say, the instruction manual Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent to us. For, you know, the Quran is right there for us, inshallah. Sure. When you enter the house, you recite Surah Al-Bakrah. So, uh, so Surah Al-Bakrah are part of Surah Al-Bakrah. Uh, Surah Al-Bakrah, <laughs> two para and a half. Right. It is very difficult. No, the hadith, hadith is so beautiful. Look what is the hadith says. The, the shaitan does not enter a house. That is, Surah Al-Bakrah is recited in it. It does not say for you to recite it all at once. Does not say you, say you recited in the morning or the evening. Being recited in it. So, a portion of it, three ayat from it, every day on daily basis. But generally speaking, generally speaking, I could tell you something. The best deeds you could do. خَيْرُ الْأَعْمَالِ أَدْوَمَهُ وَلَوْ قَلْ What is that? 
the best deeds of Rasulullah told us is something continuous, even though it's a little bit like, do you want to make Ayatul Kursi? That's beautiful, mashallah. Ayatul Kursi, it is a beautiful, it's a beautiful ayah, just one ayah in the Quran gives you all the protection, and it's from Surah Al Baqarah. What we say in the house, is that before I go to bed, we say Surah, you know, Ayatul Kursi, before, after I finish up Salah reciting. That is portion of Surah Al-Baqarah. If I am reciting it, especially on specific intervals, in continuous fashion, you get more reward for it. Because you're doing two things. You're not only making dhikr, but you're continuing with dhikr another very important aspect, which is sabr. Because you're reciting it at the specific time, continuously, day in and day out, hour in and hour out, every single day. So you're associating it, associating it with the most powerful tool Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, which is sabr, patience, to continuously recite it. The opposite of it, when you, when the, when you have a house that has no Surah Al-Baqarah recited in it, or any parts of it, for that matter, that is a house, a good place for the shaitan to dwell and live in. That is the place. You gotta live in there, and this is the place I'm gonna dwell. This is the place I'm gonna be sitting on top of the guy's head. I'm gonna be on his shoulders. I'm gonna divide between him and him, and him and his son, and him and his wife. And I would turn his life into living 